We're going to talk about how to use this Olympus BX41 microscope. Um, in this core, we typically use this microscope for anything that needs bright field, full color imaging. So the Nikon does bright field imaging um, with visible light, but it's all in black and white because the camera sees black and white. So you can either use the black and white or overlay. Um, you can even take a color image and then overlay the fluorescence on top of it, which is what um, some labs, for example, with C. elegans do on the, the, the Nikon Eclipse. They'll take a bright field image in black and white and then put their um, green and red fluorescence as an overlay on top of that. On this microscope, though, you can get true color. So if you're doing Kressel violet staining, crystal violet, or um, DAB immunohistochemistry, this is the microscope you have to use, or H&E, um, to actually get color, not just black and white. So we log on to the computer here, and what is important is that this takes your normal campus login. So you have to put your name um, and at msu.edu, um, the full email so it knows what domain you're logging into, and then enter your password. So I'll see you after I've gotten logged in. So we're logged in here, very simple. Just to do light microscopy, um, the switch is over here on the right side of the microscope. We just turn this on, and you can see the light comes on and we can adjust the brightness with this knob right here. Um, this turret turns manually. And then for <clears throat> um, bright field, we don't have to worry about as much about these different filters. I'll just put it off to, for example, six, there's no filter here, um, but or even one, I think we can keep it on. Uh, but two, three, and four will have DAPI, Fitzy, and Tritzy filters. So for bright field, we don't want those in the way. There is a burner over here to do epifluorescent microscopy. Um, you can turn this on to do fluorescence. Make sure it stays on for at least 15 minutes before you turn it off. However, I would recommend that if you're gonna do fluorescence, use the Nikon Eclipse or use the, um, the older Nikon. Um, but really, I would, in that order, Eclipse, for some reason you couldn't use that, use the older Nikon. Uh, the TE2000, then this would be my last choice for fluorescence. Okay, so I found my sample. Um, when you log into the software, one thing that you may notice is it may put up a pop-up about changing the layout to be a simple layout. You can hit decline on that. Um, you can keep the standard layout. Whenever you start a new account on this computer, like you're logging in for the first time, it's going to try to configure the software, but we just leave it at the standard configuration. Um, we hit this live button here to switch on the display um, and then we can use just the focus knob to focus to our sample. This is an HEE, H and E stain um, that was prepared by Bardis in my lab. And then we can adjust the brightness to get um, the kind of picture that we're looking for. And then one thing. Um, you can see we're on 10x right now, but up here we have 20x selected. So I actually want to, up in the top corner, um, hit that button and hit OK. It just makes sure that everything, including the scale bar, everything is all um, correct. So if we switch now to 20x, we hit the 20x button, and it just makes sure that besides changing the scale, um, it makes sure that everything is properly set in the microscope for that objective. So we can, we've zoomed in and we change the magnification. We go to 40. Again, I hit the 40. It, this is basically just telling you to make sure that you've turned the nose piece, which we already have, and hit OK. We'll have to increase brightness and refocus at our new magnification. Um, we can take a snapshot by hitting the snapshot button. And now we have our live tab, which we can freeze. And this leaves us just with our image. We can save as. Um, TIFF will be the format um, that is the most lossless for taking into ImageJ. Um, VSI is the format that will open in the CellSense software. You can also save as a JPEG or a PNG or whatever if you're going to just take it straight into a PowerPoint. Um, <clears throat> while we're here, um, there are some exposure controls and sensitivity controls you can change. 
but honestly most for bright field that you're going to be able to do is just going to be with the bright the actual um, diaphragm and um, so your diaphragm here and your brightness control um, you can mess with exposure time if you need to to get what you need but most of the time you will not need that um, and there's also a few different options in terms of the resolution but I typically leave this as is um, yeah that takes us through most of our controls here um, really it's pretty simple there are other tools in here if you want to measure um, or process the image in another way but mostly it's just a fairly simple bright field microscope that takes nice color pictures um, and then I just want to show um, there's also the option here in this process manager to take a recording um, of bright field if you needed to so if you needed something in color that was a recording um, as well as there's some other adjustments that you can make to brightness and contrast um, noting that all of these contrast and such changes um, are things that should be applied evenly to different images because you're changing the image that you have taken. Um, yeah, so that takes us through things. Uh, I'm just going to shut this down and not save. Fairly straightforward. We turn the switch back off on the microscope. Uh, the only other control I neglected to mention is to go to the eyepiece. You come around, it may be hard to see, but we have this little pictograph shows the shortest option is if we push this peg all the way in, it shows a little eye. Halfway, it will send it to the eyepiece and to the camera, or how I had it set just to look through the computer um, is pulled all the way out. Um, so basically, if you prefer to look through the eyepiece, you can push this in and it will send all the light into the eye, pull it all the way out, and it will go into the camera so you can see it on the computer. Besides that, we can shut down and remove our slide. And just out of courtesy, we can put on a lower magnification objective for the next person so they don't bump into the objective when they're trying to put their slide on. Um, and if you are using the burner for whatever reason, you've waited at least 15 minutes um, with it on. Um, and we turn it off. And with any burner, if you are going to start again, um, you, there's a wait period in between. So they want you to. Um, wait um, 10 to 15 minutes in between ignitions and as I said in the 2000U video um, whenever you're using a burner if you're gonna walk away for a few minutes it's better just to just leave it on than to turn it off and then reignite it the ignition is what causes the most stress on the lens um, but again I would recommend using the Eclipse anyway um, for any fluorescent needs you have so let us know if you have any questions um, should be pretty simple to get some pretty pictures.